Hey guys, it's Cthulhu here, so it's time for a new vlog. Um, now, as you can see from the video footage, um, I am killing Dagonoth Sentinels in the Dominion Tower, and I'll talk about that a little bit later if you don't know about it, but I'm sure most of you will have heard about it by now. Um, but firstly, what I've been doing uh, since the last vlog. So, uh, I've been doing a lot of fish flingers, uh, not just because I wanted to make a guide, not just because I thought it might be a requirement for the completionist cape, but also because recently I discovered that uh, that it holds the, the level 5 tackle box holds 30 items, don't know if that was part of the update, whether that was, up, well, that was an updated feature, because I never really was interested in finding out what the tackle box ever did, because I never imagined really getting it. Even when I was going to try and get it for the completion escape, I still didn't care too much about what it did. But then a friend told me that it actually holds 30 items. And not only that, I think I actually knew that it held 30 items from the update post. I think it said it on there. But uh, but yeah, and, um, and it just interested me because, as most of you know, I like to AFK my skills. Uh, so right now, I mean, my three priorities would be, would be rune span, would be bonfires, and also armored zombies. And I choose those three because I get a lot of experience from them. Um, but, uh, but as most of you, the, uh, the more old school, uh, subscribers will know, um, the two skills that I used to AFK more often than not was fishing and woodcutting. So I would woodcut mage, uh, magic wood and uh, magic logs, and I would, uh, fish rock tails. And, um, and that was a nice way to pass the time, but also get a little bit of money in the process as well. Um, and the only reason I think I, I dropped them is because you don't get much experience from them. And I guess experience is the name of the game for me right now. But um, but yeah, I mean, if I was to go back to fishing and woodcutting, it would be for the money that I make. And uh, and the fishing tackle box would come in really useful because if you think about it, you've got 30 spaces in the tackle box, you've got 30 spaces in your yak, and you've got about 25 spaces in your inventory. Uh, the, the three slots in your inventory that would be taken, I assume, would be one for the tackle box. I'm pretty sure you can put living rock minerals in the tackle box, so I think that would still take one item space. Um, and then also two yak pouches, I guess. And, um, and yeah, that would be my setup, I guess, for, uh, for rock tails from now on. And I would have 85 slots to collect fish in, and that would be fantastic. So, um, so yeah, that's what I think I'll, I'll be doing in the future. And that's, that's something I'm going to definitely be getting, the level five tackle box. I don't know how long it will take. It will be limited because, uh, well, because you can only play a certain amount of games a day. It's a bit confusing how, how, what is generally a, uh, a poorly rated game is given a max amount of, you know, a max amount of games that you can play. It's like making a bad game even worse. Because, I mean, you can imagine that if you restricted a popular game like Soul Wars, where you get tons and tons of, uh, uh, what do you call it, experience for your, your tickets, you can imagine them wanting to restrict your use of that game. And that would have stopped, like, I mean, if they had restricted your, uh, how many times you could play that game, that obviously would have fixed the whole problem with the, the bots and everything. Um, and the people just AFKing to try and get their points because they wouldn't have been able to get it as fast as uh, as they would have liked to. So they would have had to explore other avenues of getting experience or they would have just had to play Soul Wars for ages if it was only like two games a day. But yeah, instead they decided to add the cap to a, to a game like Fish Flingers from the very start and uh, and it's not exactly the most popular game. So when you do run out of your, uh, your chances, uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh well, so what? I'll go and do something else now. It's like more interesting. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, for my point of view, it's, it's a little bit annoying having to, uh, having to have your games limited or capped because now it's going to take me far longer to get that level five tackle box. I mean, if I can play two games a day and hopefully both of those games are perfect in terms of medals, then that's eight medals a day. So, um, what is that? Um, whatever it is, it's, it's bad, isn't it? It's, it's not enough medals. Um, it's going to take me a, a few weeks to uh, to get this uh, this tackle box, unfortunately. Um, luckily for me, though, I I think I I well there was a glitch for me yesterday. I think well it must have been because I can't think of what else it could have been. But basically, I started the day with three tickets, and uh, after playing one game, so therefore I should have had two tickets. I instead had twelve tickets. So uh, don't know how that quite worked out. But uh, yeah, yesterday I had twelve tickets to use, so I uh, used all of those, and uh, and I must have got roughly about 46 medals i guess i mean i didn't get uh i didn't get four all the time unfortunately sometimes you get only five uh, sorry you only get three medals because apparently you didn't catch all six fish perfectly even though i'm sure i did so i don't know if that's another glitch or maybe i'm just doing something wrong and for some reason i'm not noticing it because that's the other thing every time i i catch a fish with the perfect tackle 
Um, apparently, no, no, sorry. Every time I do that, I always check that it's a hundred percent rating as well. So, uh, so I'm quite unsure how I'm, I'm missing medals sometimes. Um, anyway, moving on from that. So, um, just to talk about the fish mask quickly, not from the point of view that I'm sure lots of other people have been talking for, about from it, with uh, with Jagex being involved, but also I just wanted to mention that right now it is it is an uncommon item, and there was this post that I read that uh, that said that there would be. Uh, 93,000 fish masks in the game by the end of this week and a further 90,000 in the 68 days of summer to come um, and so in total he estimated that there would be 184,000 fish masks in the game and that is just from the spins that you get from Jagex so that is just from the two spins you get a day that doesn't involve the spins that you might buy that doesn't involve the spins you get from D&D &D, from skilling from PvP uh, not PvP but yeah combat basically so, so yeah, you, you know, that, that's quite a lot of fish masks. And he estimated that by basically saying that there was probably 400,000 spins a day, given the fact that members get double spins. And, um, and then also because he, he gave, he gave your chances a 1 in 30 chance of getting a fish mask for this week and a 1 in 300 chance of getting a fish mask, um, during the 68 days of summer. And, he also equated, therefore, that there would be 68 days of summer and the seven days of this week, so 75 days before it becomes discontinued. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, even if even if you'd say that his maths is wrong and that his assumptions are wrong, you can still say at very least that there will be 100,000 of these items in the game, and that's a hell of a lot. So, uh, so yeah, who knows what to think there, but uh, I think there's just going to be so many fish masks in the game that it's not going to be a proper rare item. It's never going to be considered one anyway. Definitely don't think of it as a party hat. At the very least, it's just going to be under the Halloween mask. But uh, but still, it's it's not going to be... I think it's going to be like a tenth of the price of the Halloween mask, even after the same amount of time, because there are just so many in-game, and everyone's clued up, and everyone knows about, you know, discontinued items. It's not like this is some kind of secret, is it? Everyone knows about it. So, uh, so yeah, it's not going on the ra under the radar anytime soon. Um... And right, I think that's pretty much it. So, um, and then the main thing that I've been really doing this, this last week has been making bonfires, but also flipping in the GE, and I'm still farming snapdragons as well. I will consider farming torstals, but once I've removed the chance of disease, which I'll be able to do when I get green fingers, the, uh, the aura, and, uh, and I'll probably get the aura towards the end of July once I'm, I've definitely decided what I want to get with all my points. So I think I'm on 117,000 points now. Uh, 117,100 points, um, and uh, and yeah, so uh, so I will probably think about spending those towards the end of July, so give it another month. But yeah, tier one green fingers at very least will definitely be on my list of items to get. Um, and then let's see. So um, all right, so that's pretty much it. So now just to talk about what's on screen. So this is the diagonal sentinel method that you're watching. So simply the idea behind it is the fact that the Dagonal Sentinel you're attacking will pretty much never die and that's because he's being constantly healed by the other Sentinels. So um so yeah, it means that I can be constantly in combat with this with this one Dagonal Sentinel. Um so yeah, that's that's the first key to this method. But the second key to this method is the fact that uh you can use BGS to lower its defence to zero, and once that happens, you're then basically, you know, attacking I, I don't know like a, a a super um a super hit points rat you know a rat with just a ton amount of of hit points because it has the same defense it has uh it has uh tons of hp and and you know it's just it's just ridiculously easy to damage and then with the aid of iron titan as you can see i'm using heavily here with summoning potions also um i'm doing just a lot of damage i'm doing roughly almost 500 every single time but um but also the uh, the steel, sorry, the Iron Titan seems to be doing 100 to 200 damage each hit as well. So uh, so it's it's incredible, it's incredible experience. Um, my first try, uh, um, I hit 270k experience in an hour, and that combines the attack that I'm actually training, the defense that I'm getting from the Titan, and my constitution as well. Um, and then my second try, I hit 313k experience, so that was also pretty decent too. Um, in fact, a huge improvement on the last one, so 53k was it? I don't know, I can't remember now. Uh, but around 40 to 50k better. And, and I'm gonna do it one more time, um, after I've made this video to, uh, to see if I can improve even more. I'm almost certain I can improve because I ended this trip with, uh, 
with five prayer potions left. These trips basically only last an hour because you're using quite a lot of the resources in your inventory and you wouldn't be able to continue into a second hour with doing it with 100% efficiency. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this on the third attempt for a third hour, but uh, I'm going to do it with more summoning potions than before. I'm also going to be taking super prayer, um, prayer flasks or something like that um so yeah that will give me a lot more prayer but within a less you know less flasks and less pots basically so i have more spaces for summoning potions so uh so yeah i'm looking forward to trying that but uh but yeah you get a ton of experience here uh, i mean just to break it down i got like 170k attack experience uh so that's what i was training so that's what you could expect to get if you have the same item and inventory that i have um, I got 60k defense experience, so that was from the Titan alone, and uh, and I got 75k, uh, no sorry, 78k uh, constitution experience. So yeah, it is a great method. Um, and there was almost no doubt that uh, the Jagex will fix this, uh, this well, this method at some point. I'm sure this is what uh, this isn't what they intended the Diagonal Sentinels to be there for. So um, so yeah, if you're going to use the method, use it soon. Um, apparently range works really well here as well. But yeah, the two, the, well basically the one main key thing that you have to know is that you have to have a BGS. You have to be able to lower its defense to zero because that's what's really going to get you your experience very quickly. And also, you know, using using a, the relevance familiar that will help you uh, get more experience is obviously also very helpful. So Iron Titan if you're training uh, melee. But also, yeah, like I said, range works very very well people have been using rune arrows they've been using uh the royal crossbow they've been using just normal bolts i guess and uh, broad bolts and uh let me getting a lot of experience from it so anyway guys um i'm going to post a link to a zybase post that will tell you more about the diagonal sentinel uh method and uh, show you more ex experience rates um for the uh for the actual method and uh, and yeah then you can work it out on your own and uh, and if you're not 138 yet and you're lacking you know 99 attack defense strength or hp then this is the place to be or if you're just like me and you want the experience it's also still the place to be okay guys so uh that's enough for this video thanks for watching guys and until next time see you around